Chester District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crime perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Psychiatric evaluation has contributed much to the analysis and solution of modern crime. For example, in getting at the core of motivation, psychiatry has shown that a criminal's mental disorder may be of the obsessive, compulsive type, inability to refrain from committing a crime, like the one committed one night down in the city's warehouse in Truck Depot District. I'll get even with him. Donald and all the rest of them. Oh, show him. They can't push me around. see a flashlight in here. Stay where you are. I got a gun. What are you doing here, Schaefer? You know my name, huh? You work at Donlin Truck Company, same as my son-in-law. I've seen you there. That's just too bad for you. What's in that junk? <laughs> Something I've been saving up for a rainy day. Kerosene. I can smell it. What are you going to do about it? You crazy long-legged baboon. You ain't going to start any fire in here, not while I'm watching. Try and stop me. Get, put out that match. Watch it burn. You're nuts, you red-headed ape. Get away from my sprinkle lever. Out of my way, you fool. <laughs> ain't my fault. I, I had to kill you. Tried to push me around. Burn. Go on, burn. Oh, you're beautiful. Little child, you can't push me around. I don't know for anybody else. <laughs> Hello, Harrington. Oh, hi, she. You didn't lose any time getting here. I came right along. At least to get away from that bridge game. Find out who he is? No, not yet. Body badly burned. Fire marshal thinks he might have been the night watchman. Mm, so you told me on the phone. Following through on that? Hey, yeah. Watchman's wife gonna look at the body. To know whether it's murder or not. No word yet from the medical examiner. Thought I'd better call you, though. Was this fire set? Yeah, the marshal thinks so. Any witnesses that might point to the setting of the fire? Well, the beat patrolman thinks he might have something. Name's McCluskey, third precinct. And? Well, he just opened a call box on the corner to report in. Thought he heard three gunshots. Started down this way, saw a small coupe go out of the warehouse parking area. You get the license number? Uh, no, no, he didn't. He thinks the coupe was black, maybe dark blue, about a 49 model. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm going to hunch this is going to be a rough one. Chief in? Mm-mm, not yet. Yeah, he's probably making up some sleep. A lot of excitement around here last night. <laughs> so I gather from these notes Mr. Garrett left for me. Yeah. Murder and awesome. Mean combination. Mm, I can't for the life of me understand why anyone would set fire to a building deliberately. Yeah. Same general reason makes him shoot down an old night watchman, probably. Screw loose in his rocker. What have you there? Fire marshal's report. Fire set with kerosene. They found pieces of a gallon glass jug in the ruins. 
Oh, good morning, Chief. Good morning, Mr. Garrett. Good morning, Miss Miller. Harrington. Oh, how are you coming along with the notes? Really, Dan. I'll add this to them, please. The murder weapon was a thirty-eight caliber pistol. Ah, they got the slugs, then. One of the slugs, yes. Leg bone stopped it. I've just come from ballistics. They find the gun? No. Anything else, Mr. Garrett? You might call Lieutenant O'Brien, Detective Division, check to be sure he has that information. Also, tell him I want a thorough search made for the gun. I want it made in the warehouse, ruins, and vicinity. Yes, sir. Oh, come into my office, Harrington. All right. Sit down. I want to find a takeoff point for this case. Uh, let's see what we've got. Well, a guy drives a small, dark-colored coupe. Impossible. Bumps the watchman with a thirty-eight caliber gun. And leaves his calling card. A smashed jug that probably contained the kerosene. You've seen the marshal's report? Got the information by phone last night. Now, the modus operandi won't help. We can't bring in any pyros for questioning. All known pyros are behind bars or in institutions. So, what do we do? Figure what type of criminal to look for. This is no gang hoodlum, Harrington. No trigger man for a horse betting ring or a policy wheel syndicate. This is a dangerous lone wolf killer. Looks like a long chase. Could be. Right now, I'd say our best bet is to make a check of all gasoline service stations in the area. Get names and addresses whenever possible of everyone who buys kerosene. Process of elimination, huh? Yes. Alert station attendants to watch for a man who drives a small black or dark colored coupe. Maybe the guy will bring his own glass jug. Yeah, a long chase. Okay, so it's a long chase. Get on it. Our job is to nab this guy before he kills someone else. Sell kerosene here? Good sure do, mister. Uh, fill up this jug, will you? Okay. I got plenty of my oil heater. I like, like to keep plenty on hand, though. You know, a little extra for rainy days. Hey, good idea, mister. Hey, I uh, hope you don't mind my asking, but your name's Stanley? No. Just come to me. I've seen you somewhere. The name's Stanley. Come into my head. Go on, fill the jug. Never mind my name. No offense, mister. Hey, you ought to have a new cap for this jug. This one's all shot. Now, what's the matter with it? Hey, look, it's all bent. Your jug tips over and you lose a lot of kerosene. Listen, when I want a new cap for that jug, I'll get it, see? You ain't pushing me around. All I meant was I got a cap in the office. Ought to fit that, I'll give it to you. Everybody's trying to push me around. They don't get away with it, see? They ain't trying to push you around. I'm telling you, you can have the cap for free. Well, okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Here's your money. Out of a dollar. Okay, thank you, mister. Now, I'll fix this cap with the pliers. Eh? Just a little bit bent. Yeah. Ought to do it. There you are. Fits perfect. Okay. Hey, wait. Don't, don't throw that other one away. It's no good. Come on. Give me it. I ain't going to be pushed around. You want some trouble? Okay, okay. You take it. Creepers, you don't have to get sore. Can't tell when it might come in handy. Guy saves everything for rainy days. Better off. See ya. License 6X743. Could be the guy. You got that address right, Harrington? Well, that's what motor vehicle registration told me, Chief. 797 Commercial Street. I asked him twice to be sure. Didn't know there were any dwellings in this district. All I know is it's the address on their copy of Shaper's registration. Well, now that we're down this far, we'll have a look at 797. It could be a dummy address, of course. You can check his name with the police? Yep. No criminal record for any Fred Shaper. No police record at all. Not even a traffic violation. And doesn't make it any easier. Well, at least we got a good description of the guy from the kid at that filling station. Joe Hampton's the kid's name. What's that description again? 
Uh, tall, skinny, red-headed, blue eyes, bulge out a little, walks kind of bent over. Uh, besides phoning that in, Hampton planted a cap on the kerosene jug. Oh, you didn't mention that. What do you mean, planted? It's the kind of a cap screws out to one of those glass jars, you know. So Hampton gave shape for a new one. After he made a punch mark on it with pliers. You get the idea, Chief? If this shaper sets another fire and smashes the jug the way he did before, well, Hampton can identify the cap. Not bad. Pretty sharp, I call it. Hey, there's that warehouse, the one that burned. Yeah. 797 must be just down the street. There it is. Donlin's Trucking Company. Wouldn't live there. Come on, we'll look into this, Hangin'. the door. Come in. Mr. Donlan? Yes. No, I'm Paul Gard, district attorney, my assistant Harrington. How do you do? Oh, I am. I'd like some information, Mr. Donlan. Well, sure, sure, sit down. Thank you. Thanks. You know a man named Fred Schaefer? Yes, I know him. Does he work here? He did up till yesterday. Why? What about him? He quit and fired. I had to fire him. He was a troublemaker. Chip on his shoulder all the time. I had to call him several times for sloppy work. One of his jobs broke down on a night hall with a spoilage cargo. Repairs, towing, cargo transfer cost nearly a thousand dollars. Was he a mechanic? Yeah, maintenance. My foreman sent in half a dozen complaints about him. Loaf half the time. Tell him anything, you'd say you were picking on him. Persecution complex. That adds up, Chief. I called him up here to try to straighten him out. Didn't intend to fire him, but he told me where I could go. I had to fire him. What's he doing, bringing suit? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. Confidentially, Mr. Donlan, we suspect he's a pyromaniac. Uh, wouldn't doubt it. The man's dangerous. He threatened me. Said he was going to get even. Wouldn't be pushed around. This address is on his automobile registration. I didn't know that. Well, we want to locate him right away. Have you another address on him? Oh, I'll look at his record sheet. <laughs> I think it's still in the file. By a maniac, huh? Suppose he, he could have touched off our warehouse up the street? Your warehouse? Yeah, partly. We share it with another company. Overflow story. Yes, the insurance report did list you as one of the owners. Did Schaefer know you're an owner? Possibly. Why? Might be his way of getting back at you, or dressing him down. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Garrett. That, that seems a bit extreme. However, here's Schaefer's record sheet. Let's see now. Yeah, here's an address. 1432 Ninth Street. May I take that sheet with me? Certainly, I don't need it now. Oh, excuse me a moment. Hello? Yeah? What? What? We'll call the fire department. Emergency. Yeah, I'll be right along. I have to rush, gentlemen. Wife just phoned. Our house is on fire. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the pyromaniac murder, here is an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett. Mr. District Attorney. We began to make some progress in the case of the pyromaniac murder when one of the service station attendants we'd alerted reported that a man in a small coupe had bought kerosene at his place. Through motor vehicle registration, we traced the man, Fred Schaefer, to the Donlan Trucking Company, only to learn he'd been fired. About then, Donlan's wife called in a panic to say that their house was on fire. Now, a couple of hours later at the office... That should complete the fill-in, Miss Miller. Will you read it back to me, please? Surely. A pyro discovered setting fire in basement about 11 a.m. by Mrs. Donlan, investigating smell of smoke. Her scream attracted Carpenter working on garage roof. 
Carpenter, name of Elwood Brown, 665 River Street, saw Pyro run out of basement by way of bulkhead. Not certain can identify. Brown put out fire before apparatus arrived. Yes. You better add this. Name of suspect, Fred Schaefer. Possible motivation, revenge, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Was there any smashed jug at this fire? Not this time. Cost us up. Would be our luck. The jug cap all marked for evidence. What about an APP, Mr. Garrett? No, not yet. Not enough concrete evidence. Murder weapon hasn't turned up. District Attorney's Office. It's me, beautiful. My day is now perfect. You want Mr. Garrett? That's right. Carrington, Mr. Garrett. Oh, thanks. Yes, Harrington? I checked that address at 1432 9th, Chief. Schaefer's wife and daughter live there. And what about Schaefer? Well, a guy I talked to says she ordered Schaefer to get out. The guy knows the missus. She trades it as delicate person. She likes to spill over, too, he says. Does he know where Schaefer is? Nope. Says he never asked her. Didn't want to seem curious. Well, we'll ask her. Where are you now, Harrington? The drugstore. Corner of Ninth and Fairview. Block south of 1432. Be right along. Pick you up there. Okay. Uh, Miss Miller, you gave Schaefer's description to Lieutenant O'Brien, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Well, call him back. Tell him I want a stakeout put on that address right away. 1432 Ninth. Our man might come back there. Yes, sir. I'll be back later. This may be just the break we want. All right, these walk-ups kill me. Trying to go on a diet, huh? Yeah. Apartment 41. This is the one. You say the girl's about 12? Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt in school. Good hour to call. Just sell them anything I ain't interested. We're not. Are you Mrs. Ruby Schaefer? That's correct. I'm Garrett, District Attorney. This is Mr. Harrington. Okay to come in now? Uh, what, did you say District Attorney? Yes. Well, yeah. Here, you can come in. Yeah, thanks, thanks. We're here about your husband, Mrs. Schaefer. What? Is he in trouble? I'm afraid so. We'll get to that in a moment. Understand you ordered him to leave this apartment. Why? That's my business, Mr. Garrett. You got a nerve, honestly. It'll help us if you answer the questions. Might also help your husband. He may be a very sick man, mentally. If so, we'll see that he receives treatment. Well, something's sure wrong with Fred. He used to be a pretty good guy. Lately, he seemed to think Frances and me, when she's our daughter, was making fun of him. Talking behind his back to the neighbors. Isn't that why you ordered him out? Yeah. He was getting ugly. Well, how much trouble is he in? Well, we want him for questioning in connection with one murder and two set fires. Oh, no, you, you're kidding. No, I'm not. Well, but murder, that, that's awful. Well, where is Fred? Well, I, I don't just remember. I... Try and remember. Try hard. You've got to find him. Keep him from killing someone else. You can understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, poor guy. Mm. Okay, I'll give you Fred's address. I've got it written down. I'll, I'll get it for you. Never figured on nothing like this, honestly. Well, lady said it was okay, then. Uh, yeah. As soon as I told her what we wanted, she handed over the key, the spare key. Said we could keep as long as we needed it. Oh, she'll keep her mouth shut. Well, yeah, bet on her cheap. Said she'd be glad to get rid of Schaefer. Said she never saw such a cluttered room in her life. She say where he's gone? Well, he thinks he went out to look for a job. Yeah, we'll take a chance. He won't come back right away. Unlock the door, huh? Clutter is right. Holy. Look at this room. Need a job to find the gun in here. If it's here. Yeah, sure looks like your hunch is good, Chief. Uh, about him not throwing anything away. So the gun ought to be around here somewhere. Check the mattress on that bed. I'll look in the bureau drawers. All these 
these odds and ends, the guy must be saving for more than just a rainy day. He must be figuring on a cloud bed. Boxes, wrapping paper, old chairs, string, dishes, pans, all the stars are a mess. There's no gun under the mattress. Burn these drawers. I'll try that closet. Yeah, it's just as cluttered in here. Everything from an umbrella to a broken bird bath. Look in the pockets of that top coat, Harrington. Yep. No, nothing in them. You seen any jugs of kerosene around? No. Maybe you realize that this cutter is fire hazard enough without kerosene. How about a stake out on this boarding house? Yes. Have O'Brien put on Kovaleski if possible. Good man. I want Schaefer tailed everywhere he goes. Also on telephone reports on anything unusual. I'll take care of it, Chief. Now let's give this room a going over, but leave everything as you found it. You don't want him to get suspicious and duck out. Fred? Who is it? It's me, Ruby. Let me in. Oh, good again in all of that rain. Pouring outside. Should have worn my raincoat. What are, you, what are you doing here? I, I, I thought I'd better come to talk to you, Fred. You know, you, you ain't a bad guy. A couple of men was at my place this afternoon. Huh? What about? Who were they? Well, now, don't get sore if I tell you. Come on, come on. What is it? Well, one of them was the district attorney. What? Yeah, well, he wanted to know where he could find you. What do you want to find me for? How much does he know... What'd you tell him, Ruby? Nothing, Fred. Honestly, I just... Did you just tell him where I lived, did you? Well, he, he'd have found out anyway. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Got, a, got a good mind of... <laughs> Fred, don't. Oh, please. He said it was for your own good, but... Uh, well, well, I got to thinking. Maybe you'd better beat it, beat it out of town, huh? How, how much money you got? Well, j- just enough for bus fare back. I got some money at home, Fred. Fifty bucks, maybe. You call there and you can have it. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I better get out of town. Those guys start pushing me around. I, I'll, I'll go get the car. C- come on, you you get back to the party. Just take the umbrella, Fred. You might catch cold. Hey, where is it? Uh, never mind it. I'll get it for you. Is it in the closet? I said never mind it. Now, come with me or, or I'll hit you again. Sure is a Lulu of a night, Chief. That rain. Regular flood. It's not drier in this office than it is out there. Uh Oh, you're so right. Garrett speaking. This is Kovaleski, Mr. Garrett. Hold it. Get in on this, Harrington. Have the phone. Okay. Go ahead, Kovy. Schaefer just came out of the boarding house. Woman with him. She went up towards the bus line. He went down the street. Other way. You get a good look at her? Not too good. Can't see much through this rain. Medium height, kind of stocky type. Probably his wife. Anybody trailing Schaefer? No, oh, not right now. Thought I'd better report to you. Schaefer won't go far. No hat, coat, no umbrella. Better get on it, Kobe. No telling where he'll go or what he'll do. They go to his wife's place. We got a stake out there, Mr. Garrett. Listen, get on it quick. Understand? Yes, sir. What do you think, Harrington? Yeah, guy must be even crazier than we thought. Out in this with no hat or coat. Or umbrella. I suppose his wife tipped him off uh, about our call? The way I'm playing the bounce. Umbrella, rainy night. Let me take that umbrella that's in the closet. Not at mine. Umbrella could be a symbol of security. Yeah, yeah, could be, Chief. He may have something hidden in that umbrella. It's defense of that security. The gun. The only place we didn't look. Let's go, Harrington. Fast. There? Yep, still here. I will we'll see. Yeah, kind of heavy. Tip it up. There's something down there. Here goes. Yeah, there it is. Your 
Hunch was good, Chief. Careful how you handle a gun. Fingerprints. Yeah. I'll wrap it in this handkerchief. 88 caliber. Could be the right gun. We'll know after ballistics test fires it. I'll take it. Uh oh. We got company. What are you guys doing in here? This is my room. I... Hey, where'd you get that umbrella? This the gun you used, Schaefer? To kill that watchman? I. I ain't saying nothing. I know you. I've seen your picture in the papers. You. You're the district attorney. What about the gun? I'll tell you what about it. You can't push me around. You hear that? You can't. You can't. I'm going to take it off my mind. Don't worry. He'll drop it right now. You okay, Chief? Did he cut you? No. Just slice my coat. Oh, you sure nailed him. Right on the button. I had to. Let's get him down to headquarters, Harrington. The town will be safer. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. You may remember the case. The gun with Schaefer's fingerprints on it was the murder weapon. By mutual recommendation of prosecution and defense, Schaefer was referred to the court psychiatrist, a judged insane and committed to a state institution. Now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime... From the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord.